What's up guys, Shuri here, and today we are doing a fort tutorial. First up, I'm going to talk about the best way to use your movement to avoid damage while still being able to hit all four of your shots. So, the reason that this can be really hard with this character is every time you shoot, it shoots four little balls. So, if you're strafing side to side, you are going to end up missing a lot of these. But, Fort can jump up and down without missing any of them. As you can see when I shot on the wall, if you're going right to left with your right hand, you are going to go in a sideways pattern. So, what you want to do is you want to shoot, and then if you need to avoid the damage, you just jump up and down instead of strafing left or right as much. And then the biggest thing that you want to try to do is make sure that if you're going to move to track them, you want to shoot them with all four balls and then move left to right with your right hand. This is really important because it'll keep your tighter grouping pattern and you can always be able to shoot those four balls and then change your direction and still track them just as much as if you're doing it the whole time. It does get really hard to figure this out because it's not intuitive and it's just a lot different than every other character. So it will take you a while to actually figure out how to get this down. But once you do, it will give you so many more kills. So basically, you're just going to need to time in your head that, hey, I shoot this so, so often, and I'm going to wait until all four of these balls come out, and then I'm going to move to be able to try them to the next part. But the good news is that usually, if you hit all four balls, you will kill them, and you don't really have to track them anyways, because this character is super broken. And like I said, it will take you a while to actually get used to this. It's not something that you're going to be used to. But it is super easy to kill him. As you can see there, we had 75% accuracy, even though we did move it a lot. And then the next thing we're going to learn is using your shield to win your 1 versus 1s. So his shield seems super straightforward, but there are a lot of strategies that go into it. So one of them, as you can see, it juts out to the right and left just a little bit. So you can put it in in a sideways fashion and strafe in and out of it that way. Another thing you can do is always put it up early, that way it'll come off cooldown as soon as possible, so you can kind of throw it further ahead of you, that way it'll be there when you need it, but then by the time you're ready to pass it, you can then have it already off cooldown or close to it. So a big thing that you're going to want to do, like I said, is put it up whenever you can, that way it's off cooldown early, just make sure it's in a spot that you can use it. And then whenever you go through it, you do want to make sure that you stay near it. That way you can always double back and go through it. People are going to try to hit you, but if you can get through it, you can do things like get heals and then keep fighting and end up killing people right there. We were able to kill them after we died. And a lot of that was because we had a shield that separated us from a third party that came behind us. Right here on spawn, it was rough, but we were able to kill him anyways. Luckily, you do still end up killing the guy if he's invincible when you hit him for the first amount of damage. The ones that blow up will still hurt him. Right there, we were able to kill him. As you guys can see, Fort does an absolute absurd amount of damage. After you get used to being able to hit all four of the balls, you can kill almost everyone in one clip. It's absolutely stupid and just makes no sense. But right there, as you can see, he was going to win the fight, but I was able to throw down my shield and get the kill. One thing that this guy does better than any of the other characters like Ruby is 100% you will kill people before they get through your shield. Ruby does not have this. Ruby, you can break the pains and kill her while she's shooting the whole time. But this guy will kill you 100%. Right there, we have 75% accuracy rating and just do absolutely good. Another thing you want to do with this guy is wall peek. Sometimes you're going to hit the walls, as you can see I was doing there. But because of the way the burst work with this guy, he can shoot and then it's going to take a second for you to be able to shoot again. So what you want to do is you want to be near objects and the object can be your shield if there's nothing for you to go up against. But you do want to make it to where you have something between you and them. And since you 
You basically have downtime between those shots. There's no reason to just sit there and tank that damage. What you want to do is you want to fire at them, then get back behind a wall or be behind your shield. Then fire again and just keep doing that on repeat. But if you hide for that one second that you're not able to shoot, that will actually save you about 50% less damage taken. It is absolutely insane how much damage you take extra by being out during that downtime. Since you can't shoot no matter what during that time, it is much better to have cover for it. And it is something that you will definitely see a lot of really good players do because of the simple fact that why would you take more damage than you have to take. Right there we are able to get that kill on the Osis and we got the other guy low as well which allows us to go ahead and get everybody down on the 7 streak against very good players by the way. Uh, and a lot of that is because Ford is the most overpowered character in the game right here. We are hitting all three people all at once because you do insane AoE damage as well. I love this character so much because of that. And right here, we're just waiting to see where they're coming. Are they coming stairwell or the right side? We go ahead, throw our shield down, and as you can see, I'm getting behind the wall. I hit my ult. We're just hitting all the AoE damage, and we are just doing absolute damage to everybody. That is just so much destruction, and a lot of it just comes off because of the simple fact that you're able to get behind that wall take less damage, go out there, and then kill everyone. This allowed us to get back into this game, do tons of damage, and just absolutely clean up. But one of the biggest things that I wanted to show you with this clip is that doing this damage slow and steady is what it's all about. You keep that pressure on, but you don't overcommit and you don't overextend. You can go ahead, get these kills, and then you just stay back far enough that you can always retreat to a heal, and you just do a little bit damage at a time. Don't overexpose yourself. It really is super important to just make sure that you don't make yourself in a bad spot. Because you can do damage from so far away, and you do so much of it, there's never any reason to overcommit and overextend, especially because you can hit people with AoE damage and be completely fine. Even from the other side of walls where you can't see them, there's no reason to run in there and die. Right there, we go ahead and miss that kill, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. We are able, like I said, to continue to do our thing and wall strafe, doing all the little things we can. And right there, in case it came around the right side, I wanted to put that wall on this side of the wall. That way, I don't get snuck up on. We are able to go around and get that kill. And like I said, we are going to be playing off the walls, including our shield, because that is technically a wall, and you can strafe in and out of it, and and that will help you take a lot less damage and don't worry we have more stuff to cover in this but I wanted to make sure that you guys are hitting the like button and subscribing if you haven't it helps this get shown to more people who haven't watched my content before I'd really appreciate it if you guys have done this I put a lot of editing work into this video to make it as good as possible so if you would not mind doing that I would really appreciate it but anyways, back to it. The biggest thing for as going for it is the thing that no one does with it. It is a character that can be played very cautiously and it can take advantage of so many little things like the fact that it shoots four at a time and then has a break between it to always make sure you have your cover and make it as hard as possible to kill you. The reason nobody ever does this is it's the most OP character in the game. You have so much health, and since half of your health is armor, it regenerates basically by itself. And then also you have a shield, and like there's literally no reason to play this character cautiously. But if you do, you are unkillable by many characters in the game. And so no one ever does it just because there's no real need to do it. But if you want to play the character at its peak potential, that's definitely what you'll want to do. And it's just funny though, that no one even thinks to do that, everyone just runs straight at you with this character because of the fact that it's so OP. But this character can shoot you so accurately from so far away 
that this character is built to be sneaky. He is built to take advantage of all this. And another thing that you're going to want to do is put out pressure with your pre-firing and then shielding your teammates so when the other team is bursting that you can keep them alive. So on this map in particular, it is really important to pre-fire. And so you want to have a manual fire button. It is okay to play on automatic fire, but you definitely want to have a manual fire button. Also, you can have both in this game, which is pretty cool. So what you're going to want to do is when you see people on the right or left, you'll be able to know it. And if you don't know where anyone is, just choose one way and just pre-fire when you think people might be about to come. You don't need to do it when everyone just died and respawned. Wait 5-10 seconds till they get there if you want to. But you need to be cutting off avenues for players to come. So what this basically means is you are going to always want to keep one section of the map with a lot of your balls on it. That way they can't post up there and then prepare for their cooldowns and then come out right after you. They have to play a lot smarter and a lot of the times they will get caught off guard and run into your pre-fire and it is absolutely devastating. Because when you're putting out this much damage and pressure, your team can do so much. Right there, I go ahead and run away since both my teammates died. I throw down my shield into the ground. That way, it will be able to block the guy behind me from killing me. I was able to actually get the heal, and then my teammates were able to kill him. Right there, I am pre-firing around that corner. That way, my team has the ability to get out of spawn. And then we can just put out a little bit on them. It keeps that pressure up. And it actually matters way more than you think. Even if you don't hit people, it keeps them on their toes. And it keeps them from being able to set up in the best positions on the map. Right there, I am able to shoot that guy and get him pretty low for my team. And we are able to stick some bullets to the Aletta, which makes it where they can't get away. Remember, after you have stuck an Aletta with four balls, they are dead. Unless they use an ult. They're absolutely screwed. So, uh, you're Aletta's worst nightmare, basically. <laughs> right here, we are able to go ahead and kill everybody. Going up by six before the game ends. Great job to Steezy and Papaya. They just did such a good job all day long. And last but not least, we're going to talk about the different ways you can use Fort's ult. One way is, if there are three people in front of you, go ahead and get an instant triple kill. <laughs> That's so crazy. But what you can do basically is use it for damage where you get everyone sucked in and then you can kill them. Uh, if somebody's going to run away or you're afraid your kill is going to get taken, especially in things like free-for-all, you can use it that way. Another thing you can do is if you have people like this that are just jumping around everywhere and then you have two tanks in front of you, that keeps them from being able to come after you and get to you. And even very far away, you can use it to hit people like very far. And there are some special things that you would do an objective with the ult. I'm not covering that here because I am making a video explaining how to play ult in every objective game type. But this video would be forever if I added that. So I did want to just go ahead and make it clear. There are some things you would do in different objective games with it. But that won't be cleared here because the video would just be too long. I'm going to explain all the strategies you can use with ult. How to be a good teammate and everything. But another good thing you can do with the ult is, like I said, if there's a ton of people, just go ahead and get them all grouped up with the ult, and then you fire into them with your ability, because your ult doesn't actually do that much damage. What your ult is there for is to get them to be stunned, and in that little middle section right there, we're able to come back in the fight with it, and that is the biggest thing you can do with it. Right there, 85% accuracy, absolutely insane, and part of that has to to do with the ult keeping everybody right there for you to kill so i hope you've seen how insane fort can be please like the video share it to your friends and subscribe if you haven't it'll help in the algorithm so much to show this to other people so thank you all for watching thank you to my donators and all of my channel members i appreciate you guys and i hope you all have a great day